Since ancient philosophy, extraordinary creativity is associated with mental disorders, emotional and cognitive destabilization and melancholia. We here summarize the results of empirical and narrative studies and analyze the prominent cases of highly creative persons who suffered from dysthymia, bipolar disorder, psychosis, alcohol and drug abuse. The results show that severe psychopathology inhibits creativity. Mild and moderate disorders can inspire and motivate creative work but are only leading to new and useful solutions when creators succeed in transforming their emotional instability and cognitive incoherence into stable and coherent forms. Consequences are drawn for the treatment of persons striving for creativity. The relationship between creativity and psychopathology is deeply rooted in cultural memory. The first individual author known in Western culture, Hesiod, characterizes around 700 before Christ the god Cronos in Latin Saturnus as an incarnation of creativity and melancholic aggressivity. The relationship between creativity and psychopathology is deeply rooted in cultural memory. The first individual author known in Western culture, Hesiod, characterizes around 700 before Christ the god Cronus, in Latin Saturnus, as an incarnation of creativity and melancholic aggressivity. Theophras asks a famous question which is mostly ascribed to his teacher, Aristotle, whom you can see here with Platon. Ekeskel and Ekeskel examined whether the concept of eminent creativity of the ancient Greeks applies to depressive and bipolar disorders, concluding that a diluted temperamental form of bipolarity but not bipolar disorder sensu stricto, is associated with creativity. This opinion complies with the conception of Aristotle and Theophras, respectively, when the latter states, those who excel in the arts may be blessed by a humoral effect, not too hot, not too cold, but just right, oikraton. In this respect, Andreessen and Crater stated that individuals with bipolar temperament and heightened creativity are healthier than the average person. This idea had already been elaborated in Renaissance, most prominently by the physician and philosopher Ficino. You here can see a painting of Marsilio Ficino, who characterizes himself as deeply melancholic, and creative. In the European aesthetics of genius of the later 18th and beginning 19th century, the relationship between creativity, melancholia and madness was profoundly elaborated. Most explicitly, the statesman, scientist and poet Goethe showed that creative efforts can be motivated and inspired by anxieties, depressive moods, adjustment disorders and personality problems. However, these motivations become only productive when the sufferer is able to transform his troubles into an artistic form. The book in which I describe Goethe's coping with despair and depression is also available in Italian, Spanish and Persian language. Shakespeare, who deeply inspired Goethe, had put this in the following verses. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. 
And as imagination bodies fall, the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives the airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Empirical psychological studies are confronted with some problems. There is a lack of valid creativity tests. We don't have differential studies in which faces of the creative process person may suffer from mental disorder. And finally, without person-centered investigation, it um, remains unclear whether creative persons were creative because or in spite of their mental disorder. Keeping the limits of empirical statistical investigations in mind, we can summarize the results of empirical studies. The more depressive and psychotic symptoms were pronounced, the more creative reasoning and creative activities in everyday life were impaired. Slight forms of mental disorders are compatible with creative work, as long as the person has sufficient cognitive capacities, effective energies and supportive environments. Finally, creativity is a crucial form of psychological adaptation and not a symptom of mental illness. Narrative and phenomenological studies can offer a socially and culturally embedded understanding of the person and his her creative acts. Neuronal correlates and psychological motives can be studied in combination with narrative studies, but the creative product in itself, for example, a song or a painting, can only be validated by intersubjective resonance. In summary, creativity seems to be an expression of vital energy and undisturbed mental functions, which can help to overcome emotional and cognitive disorder. I have illustrated this on behalf of uh, some prominent cases and I should like to refer only to one example. A detailed analysis of the pop icon Jim Morrison demonstrates exemplarily how the use of alcohol and drugs interacts with mood swings, psychosocial conflicts and creative striving. It can be shown that sometimes ideas become more fluent under the influence of mild alcohol and drug intoxication. However, the capacity to elaborate complex creative tasks is mostly reduced. Many case reports and popular medializations show that severe alcohol and drug abuse over a longer period of time destroys creativity. Further on, also in pop music, creativity serves to overcome emotional instability, cognitive incoherence and psychosocial conflicts. This can be seen exemplarily in the life and work of Madonna Chicona and Mick Jagger. It is highly important for the treatment of creative individuals to know in which domain they are striving for creativity. Furthermore, the phases of the creative process preparation, incubation, illumination, realization, verification are highly important also in respect to different aspects of personality traits that come into play. Biographical studies show that emotional stability versus instability 
extraversion versus introversion, unconventionality versus conventionality, agreeableness versus antagonism, disinhibition versus constraint are intertwined dialectically. They can be activated simultaneously or in different phases of the creative process, depending on the domain, whether it's everyday life, science, art, etc. The interplay between convergently focusing and divergently associative thinking that can give rise to new and usable ideas is a dialectical synthesis of sometimes contradictory mental processes. The complexity of creative bipolarity should be respected in any assessment and treatment. The dialectics between order and chaos, cognitive coherence and incoherence, and emotional stability and instability may serve as an epistemological construct to bridge the gaps between neurobiology, psychology and cultural studies. In respect to the relationship of creativity and psychopathology, the interdisciplinary approach shows that mental disorders Emotional instability and cognitive incoherence can motivate creative efforts to overcome states of crisis or even illness. However, if expressed severely, mental disorders like severe depression, schizophrenia or alcohol and drug addiction inhibit or even destroy creativity. Generally speaking, eminent creative persons are productive not because of, but in spite of mental disorders. Creativity is an existential dimension of what I would like to call integrative psychotherapy. Finally, creativity is our central means to transform hate and violence. You will see on the last slide the painting of Aphrodite, Venus respectively, of Botticelli. Venus, Aphrodite, is a product of bloodthirsty attacks and by creative activity is transformed into beauty. Thank you very much for your attention.